Um, for most applications, not every application, but for most, the enemy of efficiency and performance is mass. Not in every application. To, to be fair and to be, I must be fair, if you're a subwoofer manufacturer and you're doing producing equipment for nightclubs or um, public address or events, you've got to build a speaker driver that's going to be built like a like, like you know isn't by Kingdom Brunel special. Why? Because it's got to have a long service life. It's got to withstand high loads. You know, um, I'm only, I'm, 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 any any uh, Stefan's, you know, you've been around the music industry, so I'm not knocking that stuff. I promise you, I'm not knocking it. It's just that, um, to my mind, in the world in which we live, where most of you have got kids or grandkids, or will have, I often worry about what we're going to hand them. What are we going to hand over to our kids? Because you know, that, that, that copper, or that magnesium alloy, that butyl synthetic rubber mix has to come from somewhere. And um, that, that motor sub-assembly, that ceramic, <coughs> that steel, you now the copper cap, fill the weight of that. And we can't keep digging it out the ground forever, you know. So, I have a passion for full range because I, I think it's the future. I think, and Stefan will no doubt later turn these speakers on and, bo and, and chat about box, how boxes are built and obviously Scott on, on box design. But later today, I think when you hear these uh, frugal halls, yeah. with, with actually a, a, a 10 pin and a paper drive that I make, um, I hope it would pleasant, pleasant surprise that the variety of and type of music they will play, and and play pretty good, and and very very close. Some would some would argue probably more pure than a than a, than a split two way system. But one thing we will all know is that in 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 the proud tradition of uh, you know sort of British engineering, which has always been about making do with whatever you've got in front of you. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? <laughs> Mate, it's our culture, isn't it? Make do amend, you know, I mean, um, you know, we, um, we are good at doing more with less. In fact, you're, you know, you know, uh, Formula One, your um, alpha, your alpha sports, is yeah. it? I mean, I just looked at the picture, you'll come up in the knees, you know, we, it is something that, it's not just us, to be fair. When I go to Japan, they're bloody good at it as well. I went into uh, the Kawasaki factory a couple of years ago with Norio, and there's this huge board up, and it says, yesterday's production and engineering faults, zero. Today's faults, zero. And then tomorrow's a blank. And if they ever get one, one error on the production line, it is chaos. They go nuts. Oh, oh, they really do, yeah. It's, you know, not for Harry Carey stuff. And they are absolutely sort of almost anal about, about the way they screw stuff together. And uh, which is why that probably that cam camera's a nick on, I suspect. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just our culture, the, you know, the UK engineering manufacturing culture that we used to have, and I think we still have pro drive we were talking about earlier. It, it, it occurs elsewhere around the world, but. but um, and, it, and it's needed very badly because um, we cannot continue as a human race to consume large quantities of raw materials. Um, I, 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 okay, at the moment, the economies of the world aren't doing too brilliantly and prices are low and there's tons of oil all over the place and all that. But that, that is not a true picture of where we stand. The reality is we've as we speak in the last hour, 24,000 new people arrived on this planet. 
24,000, the, the, the population is expanding at 20, the rate of 24,000 people per hour on this planet. Can you imagine trying to produce 24,000? Well, well, one pair per person, 12,000 of those per hour in addition. I mean, this is nuts. So we have to get better at doing more with less. We have to. Surely 24,000 pairs. Well, yeah, true, true. Sorry, you're right. My <laughs> not um, so I hope, in, in, in a very quick and sort of in, informal way, you've got the gist of a full-range driver. It's a two-in-one. A Mark Audio driver is a two-in-one. It, it has the same properties of, of a traditional heavy-duty base unit, by and large, so it can oscillate. Because we've made good use of materials and we've gone to the trouble of making sure that things don't collapse under load by the use of the materials and by the production processes we use, um, we're able to get rid of the mass so that we make the driver more, more efficient at transferring the electrical energy through, through the coil. So that's, that's stuck in there. There's, there's the magnet. We've got an alternating current uh, that's uh, making the thing move backwards and forwards. That obviously gives us a sound signal. Um, so in we go. So that coil is now transferring energy or converting energy from, from electromagnetic into mechanical, sending that pulse vibration up the coil and into the cone. But as you've always... Any, every time you do that, you are always, there's always an energy loss. The name of the game is finding materials that are low mass but, strong, but inherently strong so that they can withstand the physical load, the movement, but at the same time, they minimize the loss. That means thin and light. It's as simple as that. It's not rocket science. People would have you believe it is, but trust me, it's not. And that really is a Mark Audio driver. It's as simple as that. It's, it's the Lotus Elise of the, of the, of the full-range speaker world. Um, it can go fast, turn corners quickly. You've got power. Um, but it's light. That's, that's literally it. Um, now, there are some um, interesting little. Um, not you can see it. I mean, there are the the designs that I do are moving on, uh, and I'll pass this one around. This is the Alpair Five. Now, actually, it's one of my older designs, fully enough. But as I pass it around and have a good look inside, and you will find that in fact it's missing a component. It doesn't have a spider. I was going to actually interject at this point for the love of having Dill touch the kiln, because uh, how, how many microns is it? Uh, Eight, no, 80. 80 microns, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Point zero eight. Yeah, when it gets around to Jason and Mark. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, now, if I've missed anything, or guys, if I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm running ahead too much, or whatever, if, or if you know all this stuff, for God's sake, please, honestly, so just, just, just ask. Does this still qualify as a full range drive? Oh yeah. What are we talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah. Tweezer, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. This thing works from in a box. You get what seventy hertz, would you, in a yeah. right box? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to sacrifice a little bit of power handling yeah. to do it, yes, oh, you can force yeah. it down to seventy uh, hertz. A, yeah, it's a small driver, so we're not talking big power handling anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's What's you know. the resonant frequency? Uh, it's uh, FO is 90, 95. If you really want to push it, you yeah. could get yeah. jilts in free air. high 40s out of it, but just uh, you wouldn't want to be turning the volume up very high. You know, it is a tiny kiln, there's only so much air it can shift. Future drivers, um, I can't, I'm for, I, there's stuff I want to tell you guys because. Uh, um, a very quick funny story. We produce um, we produce a particular type of driver. It's 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 the 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 design is relatively similar, but it has a very special cone called an 
uh, MA over here, a magnetic heart, uh, a magnetic heart resonance cone, MAOP, um, which is, um, cutting a long story short, it, it, it takes the top uh, sort of five or seven microns of the cone substrate, converts that, that alloy into a crystalline structure. And those drivers go to Japan and they are only sold in Japan and in maxed pairs because they are extremely expensive and extremely expensive to build and um, they mostly go to very specialised super high end collectors. I mean, uh, an MAOP 10, which is sort of a Alpair 10, but with this, these special cones and adaptions, they retail for something like 600 US dollars, what about 400. 500 pounds a pair, so they're not cheap. But the joke is that when I eventually keel over, actually they're, collect, they're collected, they're all serial numbered. Mm -hmm. So the collectors hang on, hang on, hang on to them. And there ain't this good news when I do keel over because the price, you know, the big, <laughs> so I think it's rather hilarious given my state of my health. So I promise that, you know, so I'm actually doing a merry dance with these guys, so you ain't, ain't going to get me yet. Because <laughs> I, I want to sell them a few more drivers first before they. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just looking at the low profile. Yeah, he's got a pair of the ten ones. They just happen to be 001A. Yeah, the first pairs, yeah. And these are my Julio products, are they? Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, you can actually buy them in Japan from Koizumi san, actually. They will sell them too and ship them all over the world. But my next uh my next set of designs. Yeah. Why are they a match? Oh, right. Good question. When, if I can sort of, uh, well, I'll grab this. You imagine a production line. Usually when you build a driver, um, you start at the back end, and as you can see, we physically bolt in, you can see the screws there, we physically bolt in the magnet assembly. So, um, when I take, I'll take that central spacer out, so... We 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 start we start with the back end. We then build up the the, the, the powertrain. If I gently drop it in, whoops, uh, pop in the lead wires uh, like this. Okay, and then as you can see, we produce a. I've got to be a bit careful because it's not lined up. But we can produce a, a speaker that is moving. You can imagine a. An assembly sequence for that. Now, inevitably, as you go through each sequence, you always get a little bit of assembly variation. You might notice, for example, there there's a bonding process. Um, sorry, Stefan. There's a bonding process that's going on between the coil and the the cone neck. You can probably see that. Now we use. Uh, computer-aided glue machines. That, that's, that, that particular bond there is, is actually an epoxy bond. It's a two-pack bond. So it's a machine. It's a glue machine with two, two heads on it, thus. And the assembly is spun, and they, they, they have a bond A and a bond B. One is the base agent, one is the activator. Very, very strong industrial strength glue. But inevitably, you can't get it, it's not possible to get it exactly ev on every single driver to get, you know, your, your 1.124 grams of glue. On one drive, you're going to get 1.44 grams, and another you get 1.42 grams. You will not get it, it's not possible. There are always a given set of tolerances. Now, Mark Audio drivers... We work to a very close tolerance. If we all go, if we all went down to a typical transducer factory, almost anywhere, doesn't matter whether it's Louther and down in down in Kent, Louther, 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 or we go to Gui Sound in in uh, China or Tang Bang. They're a big maker of drivers. Some of you might have heard of Tang Bang. Foster Corporation, Fostex, doesn't matter who makes a driver. Typically, 
You walk into a factory and say, I want to buy some drivers. I go, okay, what do you want? You say, oh, no, I want a five inch driver, six inch base driver. And I go, okay, and they say, right, we'll give you a set of specifications. We've talked about feel and small air and sound pressure level and so on. And the typical industry standard on all of those is that they will give you a bucket load of drivers, let's say a thousand units, to plus minus 20% on most three and small. What does that mean? So let's say that you say to them, you, oh, I want my driver to have a resonance frequency in free air of yabba, 100 hertz. Okay, if I switch into Cantonese, tell me. Um, that means you've got a production line with all the ladies and gents on it and all the drivers are being fed down the line and all being glued up and assembled as they go along. So you get to this, this part of the line where we do the testing. Okay, we're going to test each driver to see if it's any good or not. Polarity test, in other words, that the plus and the minus have been wired up the right way. A rub and buzz test, i.e. is the coil aligned into the motor correctly or is it offset and we're going to end up with coil damage and we're going to do with some basic third and small in other words we're going to rate that driver what does that mean then so it means that driver number one could be plus minus 20 percent we've got our target of 100 could be 80 to 120 hertz fo Okay, which usually drives most DIYs mad, actually, because you've got your left, you've got that driver at 120 hertz and that driver at 80 hertz. It's not very box friendly, you know. Your, your box alignments don't look very pretty, and Scott will talk about that later. Mark audio drivers that used to drive me insane, and why for the last 10 years I had my own workshops with my own workers and built the drives my bloody self because the specs for commercial grade drivers that you might get when you walk into your richer sound showroom and buy your, and I won't mention the name of the manufacturers, but you, you shell out your 3,000 pounds for your posh speaker system and that's what they supply you. That's the basic industry specification. Why is that? Well, because you've got a thousand magnets, you've got a thousand coils or 10,000 coils all going down the line and you've got these workers and it's a bit like the long bridge, you know, the, 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 you know, the standing joke about never buy, never buy, never buy a Friday afternoon British mm -hmm. loaning car, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, oh, that'll do, you know, <laughs> oh, it's, it don't matter if it's a bit, oh, it's bang it with hammer, you know, it, all that stuff, well, trust me. The loudspeaker industry in China is not a lot different. It really isn't, guys. So, you know, that's a really crap spec. Oh, sorry, I'm not really being recorded. That's, well, a, that's a terrible specification. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really is, trust me. I mean, for a bloke like me, and I'm sure Jason and Mark and others here who are, you know, technical. But, but, you know, when you're in the consumer business and you're making four billion drivers a month, for anything from a you know, a little computer speaker to something that goes in your mobile phone, something that goes in a public address system, you name it. I mean, it's not about the quality of the drive unit. So long as it, you can understand what it's saying when it plays music or, you know, the next train is not from it. You know, I mean, who gives a SH, you know? I mean, so plus minus 20%. But for audio and quality audio, that's terrible. Okay, because this is all about price. Mark Audio, we don't do that. When Mark Audio's come down the line, they are, even on the standard drives, comes back to your question in a minute, they are plus, we, 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 we used to be plus minus 5%. We're averaging now plus, plus minus 